Okay, this is uh, lesson two in um, chaos, fractals, and dynamics. And I need to point out an obvious mistake that I made last time. I said that Bob Devaney published his little book in sometime in the earlier mid-70s, I think, which is, of course, absurd. He published it in 1989. Uh, it wouldn't have come out in the 70s because the uh, coin coining of the term fractal and uh, the discovery of the Mandelbrot set wasn't done by Mandelbrot until uh, mid to late 1970s or so. Uh, and we'll get into that more later on. So this little book uh, was finished in 1989, I think published in 1990. All right, so let's talk about what we did on lesson one. Um, we tried values of the parameter C from 2 down to 0.25. Remember, we're iterating on x squared plus C. And uh, always use the seed value of 0. And we discovered that between 0.25 and 2, uh, but not including 0.25, that the continued iterations gave larger and larger values. And we concluded that the orbit, which is the list of the iteration values, was going to infinity for all of the above values of C. Another way we're going to say this is that the orbit escaped. Okay, and then we said, you know, if... if uh, any orbit exceeds a value of 2, then it's safe to say the orbit escape. So uh, now we're going to say that for our C between 0.25 and infinity, but not including 0.25, with a seed value of 0, the orbit of x squared plus C diverges or it escapes. We'll use those terms pretty much interchangeably. But when we concluded the first lesson, we tried C equals 0.25. And we did a thousand iterations, and it didn't escape. It seemed to be settling down, eventually converging to a value that around looked like it was around 0.5, a little less. In fact, this is the case. The orbit is asymptotically approaching 0.5. We'll prove that later on. Uh, right now, uh, another way we're going to say this is that the orbit of C equals 0.25 is attracted to a fixed point, and that fixed point is 0.5. Now we say point, and we normally think of point as having uh, an ordered pair or ordered triplet, even if you have a three-dimensional system. So why am I calling this a point when it's a number? Well, right now, I just ask you to accept that. We'll uh, use the term point to represent the number, and later on we'll, we'll straighten this out and show you how it really is a point. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to look at values of C less than 0.25, and we're also going to look at negative values. Remember, we're always going to iterate with a C of x0 equals 0, and we're in, now we're going to start with C equals 0.25. So here we go back to our uh, basic iteration program. C is 0.25. Our C is 0. x squared plus C. We've got the function down here with the value of C plugged in. And we do a lot of iterations, and now we've got it up to where you can do 5,000 5, iterations, and we can see it is settling down. Let's go to the left of 0.25, keeping the 5,000 iterations, and see what happens. If I go down to like 0 0.9, 0 0.17, all those numbers, you can see every time I do this, I get settling down. I get eventual convergence. So certainly from 0.25 to 0.17 I've got eventual convergence. Let's keep going. Let's go left. Always getting eventual convergence, although notice not to the same value. And eventually when I get down to zero, something pretty cool happens, but not surprising. It's zero everywhere, so it's not just eventual conversion, it converges immediately, which makes sense. If you have x squared plus zero, that's just x squared. If you plug in zero, you're going to get zero over and over and over again. So, if we speak of all those that we did before as being eventually convergent, this is immediately convergent. This is a true one cycle, we're going to call it. Whereas all those others were eventual one cycles, eventually settling down, approaching asymptotically some number. Now let's keep going to the left. Let's see how far we can go before something 
new and interesting happens. There is zero. Still, still, still. All of these are one cycles. We might expect something to happen at negative 0.25 since something happened at 0.25, so let's watch that closely. Nah, still one cycles. So this is not very interesting. We keep moving. Now this has suddenly gotten interesting. Something happened there. Look at that. Suddenly we didn't have one cycles. Let's go back and look again and see where that change occurred. Those are all one cycles. That's a one cycle. That's looking a little different. That's definitely different. So, it looks like something happened at negative 0.75, and that is going to be a point where instead of a one cycle, it settles down to oscillating between two numbers, or a better way to put it, eventually oscillating between two numbers. It's asymptotically approaching two numbers. It looks like in this case, uh, one of them is pretty darn close to negative 0.4, and the other one is pretty darn close to negative 0.6. Okay, so we have there, instead of a one cycle, a two cycle. And the changeover occurs at negative 0.75. Negative 0.75 takes a long, long time to settle down, so it's not obvious, but it is an eventual two cycle. So now we've got an eventual two cycle at negative 0.75 and to the left. Okay, let's keep going. All of those look like two cycles. Notice we're just looking at the last four numbers that are coming up and they do seem to be oscillating. I would expect something interesting to happen at negative one. These are all two cycles, all two cycles. Ah, and something interesting does happen at negative one. Just like at zero, instead of it being an eventual conversion, it's an immediate convergence. If you plug in negative one, you get zero. You plug in zero, you get negative one. You can see that down here. You might want to try it yourself. So we immediately get a two cycle there at negative one. So let's just keep going. Back to our eventual two cycles. And when we hit negative 1.24, we've still got an eventual two cycles. See the 0.2 approximately there, the negative 1.2, the 0.2, the negative 1.2. Now let's go to negative 1.25. Okay, I got the negative 1.2, 0 0.201, 0 0.212. That looks like it's still a two cycle. But look at this. Okay, right there we've got, let's look at it closely, point one, two, three, ooh, we've got a four cycle there. Now watch, watch as I, I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to take, and I'm going to just gradually increase the end. I want you to pick one of those numbers, take the point two eight nine at the top. Okay, watch, it jumps to the bottom, moves up. Okay, that's an indication that I have a true four cycle. Okay, now it's the last number on my list, now it's the second to last, now it's the third to last, now it's the fourth to last, now it's the last again. So I've got a, a definite two cycle there, negative 1.26. Negative 1.25, not obvious. I'm sorry, definite four cycle there. Negative 1.25 is not obvious. That's the boundary point, and it does eventually converge, but it takes a long, long time. In order to see that, we're going to have to look at it graphically to get a better feel. So we'll do that a little later. Okay, so let's see what we've learned so far today. Um, we iterated with a seed of x0 equals 0, always doing that. Starting with c is 0.25. And we found that if you go from negative 0.75 to 0.25, the orbit is eventually convergent comes down to a one number. It's eventually a one cycle. Except, of course, with c equals zero, which is an immediate one cycle. At c equals negative 0.75, we change over to an eventual two cycle. And that continues from negative 1.25 to negative 0.75, eventual two cycles. And at one negative 1.25, we have to change over to an eventual four cycle. And when you double 
when you double the number of cycles, that's called a bifurcation. Bi, two, furcation kind of comes, same word that fork comes from. So it, it, it's, it's a forking of the um, convergence. So we have twice as many. And we're going to see orbit doubling occurring over and over again. We'll be able to jump sometimes from a 4 cycle to an 8 cycle, an 8 cycle to a 16 cycle, and on and on and on. So, that's all we're going to do today for the second lesson. If you'd like to see what's going to happen later on, maybe predict and get ahead of the game, uh, you can try experimenting with numbers to the left of negative 1.25 and see what happens, see how things change over. You can do that on your calculator or with GeoGebra. Uh, there are also a number of other ways you can do this. And that's all for today. Thank you.